Hello folks. So in the previous video, I got as far as adding this player onto the screen and I've created a rectangle that kind of represents him, but I haven't got any controls to be able to move him around. So that's what I want to focus on just now. Now, if I go back into my game loop, there is already an event handler here that's looking for, well, at the moment, it's only looking for the quit event. So what I could do is add in my controls within this section, but instead I prefer to add it in within the class itself. So if we go to the player class, I currently have the constructor, the init method, and then a draw method. In between these two, I'm going to create a new method called move. So we'll come up here and say def move. The only arguments that it takes, well, the only argument is self. And then I can start looking for key presses within here. I will add a comment to say process key presses. And it's going to be very similar to how the event handler works, except now I'm just looking for keyboard inputs. So first of all, I need to know which keys have been pressed. And I can return that by assigning it to a variable. Key equals pygame.key.get underscore pressed. And that's going to tell me which keys have been pressed on the keyboard. Now from there, I can start looking at this key variable and say, has the A button be pressed or the D button? Uh, in my case, I'm using WASD for controlling the player. You might be using the left and right arrow keys. Uh, and you can just change this code accordingly. So to check for these keys, I say if key square brackets pygame dot capital K underscore, and then it's the name of the key that you want. So I'm looking for A to move to the left. If that's been pressed, then the rectangle of, this, of the player needs to move over to the left. Now I'll just put a pass for now. I'll come back to this. I want to add in the next key. So if key pygame dot capital K underscore D, so this is D for moving to the right, then I move the rectangle over to the right. So to actually move them around, what I can do is add in here self.rect.x because it's the x coordinate of the rectangle that I'm actually going to be changing. Let's reduce that by 10 pixels. And then if I'm moving to the right, then it's the exact same thing, but now I'm increasing it by 10 pixels. Now if I run this code, nothing actually happens. I can't move them left and right. And that's because although I've created this move method, it's not being called anywhere. So I've created an instance called jumpy, and I'm calling jumpy.draw, but I'm not calling jumpy.move anywhere. So all of this code here is never being executed. I need to go into my main game loop, and pretty much just at the beginning, before I draw my background and draw the sprites, I want to run that move method. So again, I call the name of the instance, and then from there, I call the move method. Run this again, and now I can move him. Now, he pretty much just flies off the screen in an instance, so you might see him flashing here and there when he moves. The reason for that is the game is running far too quickly right now. So you might be familiar with games typically running at, well, modern games will run at 60 frames per second. This is running way beyond that because it's essentially a very simple game and it's running as fast as a computer can process it. So there's nothing really to process here. That's why it can go so fast. I need to be able to limit that frame rate so that the game is actually playable. And this is done with a couple of extra variables. We go right to the top of the code before my game loop. And just down here where I've created the game window, I will add a couple more lines. So I'll set a comment to say set frame rate. And first of all, I'll create a couple of new variables. Clock equals pygame.time.clock. And then I set my frame rate. So FPS is 60. And now I can go into my main game loop again. And right at the beginning, before I do anything else, I'll say clock.tick. And then in here, I put in the frame rate that I want, which is that FPS variable I've just defined. So both of these, clock and FPS, are the two variables that I just created a second ago at the top. So if I run this again, you can see it's a lot smoother. So it's still moving around pretty quick, but that's just how quick I want the game to be. Uh, but it is now manageable and you can actually see things on the screen. So that's set and fixed to 60 frames per second. You can play around with that. Uh, if you don't want the player moving as quickly as he does, you can just reduce the speed variable here. So instead of uh, within this move method, instead of 10 pixels, let's say five, and now he's gonna move a half the speed. Uh, but I like it to be quite a fast paced game just to make it a little bit more difficult. So I set this to 10. Now the next thing I want to do is to stop the player going off the sides of the screen. So right now there's no limit to that. He can just slide off the edge of the screen and there's nothing stopping him. So to do that, I need to check where he is relative to the left and the right edges of my game window. However, 
the way I've set up this key prices section right now makes it a little bit difficult because what I can do is say, have I gone off the left side of the screen with an if statement? But then what if it has? Well, by that point, it's too late. The rectangle has already gone beyond here. And at that point, I'm just going to say, yes, you have gone off the edge of the screen, but it's too late to do anything other than moving back again. What I want to do rather than moving him back and forth is instead keeping exactly where he is and add in a couple of extra variables. So within my move method, right at the beginning, I'll add a section to say reset variables. So before I actually use the money to define them and then I reset them every iteration. I'll say dx and dy are equal to zero. And d is standing for delta. So that is essentially the change in something. So delta x is the change in the x coordinate and delta y is the change in the y coordinate. Now, rather than instantly changing the rectangle coordinates here, I can change my dx and dy. So when I press the uh, key A, my dx, which is my delta x, becomes negative 10. So it's essentially the same thing as what I had before, but I'm not, I'm not instantly changing the rectangle's position. I'm just saying I want to change it by this much. Now I do the same for my dx when I press the D key. So now my dx becomes positive 10. Of course, now that I've done this, I lose the functionality for moving the player. I have these variables, dx and dy, but my self.rect is not moving around. So we need to make sure that underneath all this, I have a section that says update rectangle position. And here I can change my self.rect.x just like I had before within this section, but now I can adjust it by adding the dx variable to it. And I'll do the same for self.rect.y and I add the dy variable. Now I know I'm not actually controlling the dy variable within here, but I'm adding this just now because it will come later, uh, at a later stage run this again, and now the controls are back just exactly as they were before. I still can go off the screen, but now that collision check is going to be a little bit easier. What I need to do, first of all, is I have my key presses processed, and then I update the rectangle position. So between those two sections, I need to first of all check, is it safe to update the rectangle position? Are those variables going to be okay, or are they going to give me a collision? So this is kind of like a preemptive collision check. I don't move first. I say that I want to move, then I check if that movement will give me a collision, and if it does, then I readjust. Add a comment here. Ensure player doesn't go off the edge of the screen. So first I'm going to move to the left, or I'm going to check the collision to the left. So I can say if self.rect.left, which is the left-hand side of the rectangle, plus dx, essentially this section here is kind of the same as what's going on here. So I propose that I move by this amount. So now I'm saying, well, if I do move by this amount, am I going to be off the left-hand side of the screen? So the x coordinate at the left-hand side is just zero. So am I going to be less than zero? If that is the case, then I don't want dx to be minus 10 because that's clearly too much. That pushes me all the way off the screen. What I actually want dx to be is just the distance between the player's left-hand side and the edge of the screen. So I can say the dx is equal to zero, the left-hand side of the screen, minus self.rect.left. Or to simplify it, just negative self.rect.left. So now if I run this again, I can move as far as the edge of the screen and now I can't move any further. He bumps up against it and he stops. So now I can do the exact same check for the right-hand side. Let's say if self.rect dot right plus dx, so the current right hand side plus where I want to move by, if that's going to put me outside of my screen width, so off the right hand side of the screen, uh, then the same thing, dx is equal to my, my entire screen width, so screen width minus self dot rect dot right. Run this again, and now it stops on that side as well. So now I can move left and right, but only within the game window. Now, because I'm updating my rectangle position after all of these checks, it means that I already know how much I'm allowed to move by before this happens. So at the end of all this, and this will grow this section here because I'll add collision as well. After all this is done, my dx and dy, they might not be what they started out as. Okay, so one last thing that I want to do before I wrap up this video is it's fine when the player is moving to the right, 
but when he moves to the left, he's still facing in the same direction. So I want him to flip and move to, uh, and actually look in the direction that he's moving. And that is quite easy to do. So I could use two different images. I could have this jumpy and I could make him jump right and jump left and then load in the right one depending on which key is being pressed. But Pygame also has a function uh, that allows you to simply flip an image 180 degrees either on the X axis or on the Y axis. So I can add an extra variable and using that variable, I can flip the image depending on which way he's going. So in it, at the start where I've got my init method in a player class, I will add an extra variable and I will call this self.flip. And to start off with, it's going to be false. So the player starts off not flipped. Then the flip variable is going to be changed depending on the keys that I'm pressing. So when I press the A key, I'm moving to the left and that's the point where I want to flip the image. So I want to say self.flip becomes true at this point. If I press the D key again, then I'm moving to the right again. Well, I don't want to flip. I just want to use the image as is because it's already pointing to the right. Remember, this image looks to the right anyway. So that's the non-flipped condition. And now I can go into my draw method. And here where I'm drawing onto the screen, rather than drawing the image itself, I can draw a flipped version of it. So this is going to get a little bit confusing. I'm going to delete this section here, add a little bit of space just to show what I'm about to type out. So what I'm going to be drawing is actually a flipped version. So I say pygame.transform.flip. What am I flipping? Well, I'm flipping the image, self.image. And then I need two more arguments. The first one is whether I'm flipping in the X coordinate or uh, the X axis. Or, oh, sorry, no. The first one is, uh, yeah, yeah, if I'm, if I'm flipping left to right. So this is where my self.flip variable comes in. This will be either true or false, depending on which way I'm looking. And then the second one is if I'm flipping up or down, well, I'm not. So that's always going to be false. I'm just going to get rid of these spaces. I only added them in just to separate this line while I explained it. The rest of it stays exactly the same. So now instead of loading in, or sorry, instead of blitting the self.image, I blit the flipped version of it depending on which way he's facing. Run that again. As long as he's looking to the right, is fine. But as soon as I go to the left, you can see he flips. Flips back going to this side, flips going to that side and so on. So now the flip's working correctly and the player actually moves left and right based on which way he's facing. So the game is starting to take shape, but it's still a little bit basic. Uh, what I want to do is add in some platforms for the player to jump on and actually add in some physics as well, where there's gravity pulling him down, but he's able to bounce up every time he jumps onto a platform. So I'm going to do that in the future few videos. Uh, for now, if you found this useful, then please do leave a like and subscribe and thanks for watching.